Brooklyn, in my estimation, it was a turn for the worse because all the momentum that they built in Toronto, I think Brooklyn fell flat. This dynamic of the good guy and the bad guy was kind of flipped on its head, whereas going into the first two days, maybe even the first three days, you know, Floyd is usually the most hated, but it seemed as if from the media writer's perspective that Floyd actually was the baby face, the good guy. They were saying, oh, he's more mature. He didn't, you know, go to the bottom of the barrel. Uh, he let Connor, which ironically is a reflection of the early Money Mayweather character, he let him go there. Until they got to London and then I didn't like anything either one of them said. Um, and I just kind of just tuned it out. So I watched it. But I give both of them like a 9-9 nine, nine round. And in the end, I look at it as this. If I am a promoter, did these two competitors and showmen at this point, did they do their job? Yes, they did their job. Did they convince people that were on the fence to buy the fight to actually buy the fight? Yes, they convinced people that were on the fence to buy the fight. Did they change the mind of the casual boxing fan that wants to see a competitive 50th fight from Floyd Mayweather. No, you're not going to change that type of fans. Um, you're not going to change that type of fan. They, they have already dug their feet in and they're not going to move. They're going to wait for the Triple G and um, Canelo fight. But you're not selling this fight to them. You're selling this fight to the masses, the international masses. So was this whole thing a success? Yes. Do I think that they wish... They would have done it earlier based on the uh, response. Yes, because this turned into a traveling show. This turned into Wildin' Out, URL, and Saturday night's main event for four days of, in a week. Thank you for tuning in to the Road to Mayweather McGregor. This is Champ Creed. We will have the Mayweather McGregor Moneyline special for all your gambling needs, all your money line questions. Where should you lay it? How should you lay it? When you should lay it? And why you should lay that money down at the sports book? We'll have that special coming up next. And then the final component of our Mayweather McGregor special will be going into fight week where we will discuss the tactical aspect. And here's a bit of a preview of a tactical question that I actually got the opportunity to speak to Conor McGregor about and look at his response, listen to his response, because that's the direction where we're headed for the final component of the special. All right, Connor, uh, here in the middle. Uh, Champ Creed, Fox Sports Radio. Um, your, your stance is more of a traditional karate, Jeet Kune Do stance, and you move very well uh, north and south. Mm -hmm. Floyd, his uh, elusiveness allows him to move east-west, and he tends to throw his opponents off balance before they can plant and throw the power shots. Mm -hmm. With your boxing training, and there's such limited amount of time, how have you found a way to balance your energy with the movements that come with boxing as opposed to what you traditionally study for in MMA? Yeah, a kar karate style is one of my stances. But I can stand many ways. I can attack many ways. I can attack from both stances. I can switch up, go from a type or from a karate stance to a type on those stance. I can go to a boxing stance. I can, I can go to a Thai boxing stance. There's many different ways to stand in front of a man and, and um, I know where the shot he throws and I know what to expect, I've seen it before, he does the same stuff over and over again, similar to tonight, saying the same stuff over and over, so we're preparing, but him, he knows nothing, he, he knows absolutely nothing of what way I'm going to approach this fight and what way I'm going to come at him, so that's a beautiful position I am in, so I look forward to exploiting that and, and getting that knockout win. All right, and the, um, the last thing is speak to your ability of visualization. MGM Graham, before you fought Dustin Poirier, mm. a woman came up to you and said, hey, are you a fighter? And you said yes. And she said, did you fight Floyd Mayweather? You said no, but I'm going to knock him out like, I knock, like I'm going to knock out Dustin, right? This was years ago. I see you about maybe two years later, and then you bring up the fact that you will be the king of Las Vegas. Someone in the crowd says, but you got to beat Floyd. And you said he can get it too. <laughs> and now here we are. Yeah. Can you speak to the level of uh, like the, how you verbally speak these things and they come to it? Where did you learn that trait to visualize these things? Um, 
I tell you, it's been one hell of a journey. <laughs> it's been one hell of a journey. Um, four years, four years I'm signed to the UFC. I was able to rise up, capture the two gold belts, capture all the records, and now I'm facing uh, the current number one guy in boxing. What a journey, I mean, I'm just blessed. As far as like visualizing it, I, I honestly feel I can predict the future. I just, I, if I see something in my head, I speak it out loud, I'll believe in it truly, and then I just, it just happens. <coughs> and it's been happening for me my whole career. And I guarantee you, August 26th on the night when we're sitting back here or backstage in the T-Mobile, you'll be asking me the same question, how do you deal with that? I just see it, I speak it, and it happens, and that's it. I can't fully tell you why, but I how, but it's just, yeah, yeah, sure, thank you. Thanks, guys.